what would you change in your life? What if you could unleash the miraculous in your everyday life? Experience freedom, live in peace, change the world, become spirit contemporary. Join Leon Fontaine, world-renowned conference speaker, senior pastor of Canada's fastest growing church and CEO of Canada's only Christian TV station. Today on The Spirit Contemporary Life. Wherever you worry, faith is not at work. Wherever you are anxious, faith is not at work. In John 10, 10, it says that Jesus came to give us life and life more abundantly. So why is there such a disconnect between this biblical promise and how most Christians live today? Why have so many believers become spiritually weak and ineffective at sharing Jesus's message of love? The spirit contemporary life is the answer. It's being led by Holy Spirit, but in a contemporary way. It's being Jesus and demonstrating His love in ways people can understand and appreciate. Spirit Contemporary is unique for everyone. It never compromises the truth, and it never makes others feel uncomfortable. It's freeing yourself from religious constraints and walking freely in God's amazing grace for His purpose. The Spirit Contemporary Life is absolutely crucial if the global church and her people are going to change the world. And now, from Calgary, Canada, Pastor Leon Fontaine. There is a faith that is available to everybody here who has given their life to Jesus Christ. And this faith is for you to apply it to the mountains and the circumstances in your life. And if you do, and you learn to deal with this thing called doubt. Now, doubt's not a demon. It's not a devil. Doubt is simply how it's you not controlling your mind, and it goes into doubt. And it's very easy to control once you understand the three steps of doubt. You just shut it right down. And then faith begins to go to work. And the Bible says through faith and patience is where you win in life. So we can't doubt in our heart. Over the years of pastoring and in my own personal life, if I could tell you stories of times that miracles began in my life but never finished. Where something started and I saw God in it and then it never came to fruition. Where I saw a bit of a miracle, but not the one I was believing for. And it can leave you really hurt. It can really leave you wondering, how does this work? Was it not God's will for this to finish? Was he just teasing me with a little bit of power and then not finishing for me? Matthew 14, 22, immediately Jesus told and compelled, made his followers, disciples, get into the boat and go ahead of him across the lake to the other side. He stayed there to send the people home and to dismiss the crowds. After he had sent them away, dismissed them, he went by himself up into the hills and the mountains to pray. And it was late and when evening, night came. Jesus was there alone. By this time, the boat was already far away, many stadia, and a stadium was about 600 feet from land. It was being hit, buffeted, beaten by the waves. Has your life ever been hit by the waves of life? Have you ever had a, a relationship, just a storm begins to blow, or all of a sudden things that you thought were working aren't working? And anyway, so this boat is being buffeted by the winds. And it says between 3 and 6 o'clock in the morning, which is called the fourth watch of the night, Jesus came to them walking on the water. They were afraid, terrified, and they said, it's a ghost, and cried out in fear. But Jesus quickly, immediately spoke to them and said, have courage, okay? Be of good cheer is the King James. It means have courage. Then he says, do not be afraid. Two things, have courage, don't be afraid. Peter said, Lord, if it's really you, command me to come to you on the water. I want you to notice what Jesus said. He said, come. 
Peter left the boat, walked on the water, and came towards Jesus. This storm, this water is a type. This story is being told not so we can all wow by Peter, but so that we will know how to deal with the storms in our lives. We will know how to deal with the wind, the waves, the buffeting surf, or not the surf, but the spray, the, you know, all that's going on, walking on top of your circumstances. So it says that Peter left the boat, walked on the water to and came towards Jesus. But when Peter saw the wind, 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 he became afraid, terrified, and he began to sink. He shouted, Lord, save me! And immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him, took hold of Peter, and said, your faith is small. Well, the Bible says we all have the same measure, so why is he calling him with small faith? What little faith you have, you of little faith, why did you, look at the word, doubt. Jesus quickly, being the Son of God, knowing that God the Father creates by faith, Jesus did his miracles by faith, and he understands faith so well that he could tell, why did you doubt? He didn't say, why did you become afraid? He said, why did you doubt? And he gives us the very first thing, not the first, but he gives us a real look at how doubt begins to control the miracles, the things we're trying to win in life. And it stops the supernatural power of God and leaves us like everybody else having to deal with our own strength, our own thinking, our own emotions, our own abilities when Jesus died to give us his power, his strength, his mind, his emotions. Why isn't it happening? I was talking with a person just one of the guys recently. And he said, someone asked me this question. I, I'm learning God's word, but I want to know Jesus. How do I get to know Jesus and not just the word? So we were chatting about it. And when, you, when it comes right down to it, you cannot separate Jesus from the word of God. The Bible says in John chapter 1 that in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God before the world was even created. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And it goes on for an entire number of verses showing us that Jesus is the Word, or that Jesus is the revelation of God. Jesus is God showing us who He is, what He is like. And so you cannot... So a little note from, from how I look at it and how I've experienced it. As I've learned to study the Word and just read the Word and just say, Holy Spirit, guide me in the Word. And I keep reading it, bringing it into my life. It suddenly began to change for me where instead of being a knowledge-based thing like I would do when I studied for exams and I would cram and I'd understand principles, whether it was, you know, uh, first-line drugs or whether it was, I was a, a paramedic years ago and it's all the tests and the things and I would just memorize and learn all these things and it would, to me it was just a knowledge but when you study the Bible, which is a living thing, because Jesus is the Word. You just can't separate them, folks. Now, if you make the Word law, then it's just dry. But if you make the Word a person, this is Jesus speaking to me. This is Jesus guiding me. Something happens to you, and the Word begins to speak to you even when you're not reading it. You'll be in the middle of a situation with your spouse, and, it, and all of a sudden the Word will rise up and say, a soft answer turns away wrath. And it's the Word speaking to you. But who's the Word? Jesus. You'll be in the middle of a situation financially and, and you're trying to figure something out and you're going, should I even attempt this? Should I even do this? And all of a sudden, rising up from within you is he's giving you the power to make wealth that he might establish the covenant that he swore to your fathers as it still is this day. And the word begins to rise up within you. You cannot separate Jesus and, and you'll begin to sense Jesus and know Jesus as you focus on the word. But if you try to not, if you're not going to become disciplined in learning the word, getting into a church that'll teach the word and begin to figure out a way, whether you listen to messages and read the Bible and teaching books, this whole ability to get God's word into you. If you don't do that, you will never know Jesus. 
Okay? And so it, Jesus and the Word are the same thing. So now, let's thinking about that principle, here's Peter. He's in a boat, and there's a storm, and this storm's going to kill them all because they're all freaking out. And Jesus starts walking on the water. Now, back then, the, 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 the thinking was, the superstition was amongst fishermen was that if you saw a ghost, it was a sign you were going to die. And that is why whenever you see in the Old Testament, someone sees an angel or, or they see Jesus or they see something, they absolutely freak out. I mean, I would too, and you would too, if you happen to walk into your bedroom and there's this glowing angel saying, I have a word for you, Leon, today. I'm going, oh, hi, how you doing? Want a cup of coffee? It's not going to happen like that, okay? We're gonna, but they thought they were going to die. So they see it, and Jesus knew that in order for this miracle to continue, him to get into the boat, the storm to be stilled, Peter to walk on the water, to make it to the other side, where an incredible miraculous crusade was going to take place and tons were healed, that he had to be careful with those people. Because you and I, oh man, I got so much. You and I have the authority. The human race has the authority on the planet, which is why God wants to be inside of us. And so does the enemy. Who said, be courageous. Don't be afraid. So they heard his voice. Now Jesus has spoken. Now we're not going to kind of split up the triunity of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, but when God speaks, worlds come into being. When God speaks, you know, the seasons came into being. <laughs> Everything came into being from planets. When Jesus speaks, there's no difference. When Jesus speaks, he's, he is God with us. So Jesus said earlier, we're going to the other side, get in the boat. They had a spoken word from God, you're going to the other side. If they'd have just believed that, they'd have walked through that storm, no problem. But they couldn't believe the spoken word of God that said, going to the other side. So here he is now, and, he's, and he says, hey, be of good courage. They've got a choice. Do you believe the words of Jesus and be courageous? Well, Peter and everyone knocks Peter in this story, and it kind of bugs me. Because when he said, be courageous, Peter took that first one to heart. To get out of a boat, if you've ever seen the lake, Galilee, and, and to get out of a boat in the middle of a storm is certain death. How are they going to turn a sailboat around in a storm to get you before you drowned? They can't. You're going to die before they ever get back to you in time. So courage, I'm telling you that man found courage. And he gets up and then Jesus said, if it's you, tell me to come. Jesus said, come, one word, come. But it's the Son of God speaking that word. It's the revelation of God with us. There's no difference between Jesus and his word. They're both the same. When Jesus says, come, and by the way, they didn't have a New Testament to read yet. Peter gets out of the boat and he starts walking on top of the water to Jesus. Now, as he's walking on the water, it says he became very aware of the wind. What did he do? He was locked on to Jesus, and he changed his focus. Instead of locked on to Jesus, because the waves, see, he wasn't walking on a flat pool. Jokingly, so there was one time I was in Phoenix with Sally, and they had this fountain, and it was spraying water out, and it was only literally this deep and had a black kind of black lining and it looked like a deep pool so for a joke I lined up the camera and said just practicing some water walking and, and I just kind of walked and it looked exactly like I was walking on the water and but this wasn't like a calm way this is waves rolling at him he would have been walking up and down waves I mean this is not an easy little thing that we're just seeing a little flat pool Peter walks on the water and he begins to sink why did Peter begin to sink? Well, Jesus said to him later, why did you doubt? Now, most people who don't receive miracles don't like to ever think that they had any part to play with it. That is such a pervasive teaching around the planet that faith, everyone's backed away from teaching faith, teaching God's word. Because then, are you saying that, that this could be, you know, I let doubt in? Well, if you either have to decide, I'm going to learn the word of God and I want truth. Or just, I don't want any blame. I don't want to think it's anything I could have or couldn't have done. And, and so if it happened, it's God's will. And someone says, well, you know, Leon, th this bit about faith is ridiculous. If it's God's will, it's going to happen. That's a ridiculous statement. If it's God's will, it's going to happen, really. 
wasn't God's will you cussed at the driver on the way to church today. The Bible says he is not willing that any should perish and go to hell. 100,000 a day are going into eternity without Christ is what we're, we kind of figure out when we do our stats around the planet. But that's not his will. You're right. It's not his will. Just because something is God's will doesn't mean it's going to happen. There needs to be a human being in agreement with God, and that is where we have faith, believing, and then God and man work together, and something miraculous takes place. So here's Peter walking on top of his circumstances, seeing a, mir a miracle. He's walking on the water. It's like you and I walking on and, and seeing sickness change, seeing our relationships change, seeing the things that, that the banker said it's impossible, ch changing and money's beginning. Whatever your storm is, whatever your circumstances are, we always say, well, under the circumstances, I guess I won't make it tonight. Well, why are you under the circumstances when you're to be walking on top of the circumstances, on top of the storm? Peter Peter's walking on the water and he begins to sink. Are you in the middle of a situation where you, you started to get a miracle? I have lots of times. That's what made me dive into the word because you're in the middle and you, you see God do a miracle here and a miracle there and you think, ah, it's going to happen and then it doesn't finish. So I guess it wasn't his will. <laughs> Miracles are always his will. Let's look at Peter. Peter's walking on the water to Jesus. He gets locked onto Jesus. Focus off Jesus. Focus on the wind. The second he's focused on the wind, his brain goes, people can't walk on water. What the? Beep, beep. I mean, you, just, you see, to be fleshly minded is where you're going to lose. To be spiritually minded is where you're going to win, according to Romans chapter 8, verse 5 and on. So his brain would have started the doubt. This is impossible. Now, where doubt is left, fear immediately comes in. Doubt, then fear. And when fear comes in, it opens the door to just a spirit of fear, and faith just shuts down. Wherever you worry, faith is not at work. Wherever you are anxious, faith is not at work. Which is why the prayer of commitment, which is casting your cares on him, when you are believing God for a miracle, is absolutely crucial. Because you cannot pick up the cares of this miracle. You cannot pick up the worry, the stress, the anxiety. When you do, faith just shuts down. And faith, by the way, flows through you. Peter is sinking. He's done something wrong. He's, he's, he's got his eyes off of Jesus. And then, he's got, and then doubt comes in. And then as soon as doubt comes in, fear comes in. And when fear comes in, you, we all know what that feels like. There's lots of different ways to say fear. It could be terror. It could be anxiety. It could be worry. It could be stress. Whatever word you want to give it. But he begins to sink. As he begins to sink, he could have gone... What kind of a friend are you? You said, come, I came. And I'm sinking here. Blub, 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 gone. He could have gotten mad. Oh, thanks a lot. Tell me to come. And here I am in the middle of this storm with you. And do you think you can help me? Oh, no. Blub, 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 die. But I want you to notice what Peter did. He asked, he wanted a word from God. He wouldn't move till he had a word from Jesus. Then when he's in the middle of the miracle and he is sinking, he immediately reached out to Jesus. And Jesus is the word. You see, when you're going through things and it's not going the way you want, the way that we, we, we get off base is that we begin to focus on the problems, the pain. And the pain can be a relationship pain that almost toasts you. It can be a physical pain that, 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 that's got growths or cancers or, or something is going on. Or it can be a financial pain that everything you've worked for is about to, to go. You're sinking in debt. You're, you're sinking into divorce. You're sinking into to sickness. You're going to die. What? Ever this storm is, and you're sinking, it's not a good feeling when you're under the water. I've almost drowned, like probably many of you have, and it's an awful feeling when that water starts filling up your throat. And you go, anybody help me? Jesus reached out and grabbed him by the hand. He didn't throw him over his shoulder and drag him to the boat. It doesn't even say that. It says they went to the boat. Which means he just put him back on his feet on the water. And they walked back to the boat. What are you in the middle of right now? What are you believing God for? If, if things aren't happening the way you want, you need to make a decision that doubt 
is something only you can control. Doubt is not demonically controlled, although I know he will always try to shoot doubts. It is your focus. So those three words I'll give you, and you can study this for yourself as you continue this week, is your, that when you get your eyes, your focus on your symptoms, your circumstances, your storm, it creates doubt. Where doubt is not immediately dealt with, it opens the door to fear. Where there is fear, Job 3.25 says, what I fear befalls me and what I dread comes upon me. So fear is worry, anxiety. If you're sitting here and you've been praying for something, but you worry about it, your faith, there's no faith in that prayer. It's just a bunch of words and, and words are containers. And so don't be like so many of us have done. I know I have. We're in the midst of something. I just got my, I got my eyes on Jesus initially, and the miracle began to happen. Then I started the doubt. Then I got over in my head. Then fear began to come in. And as I'm failing, I just stayed in, in, in the financial realm doing everything I could to fix this problem. I didn't go back to the word. I didn't go back to Jesus. Or I'm believing God for a miracle in my body and, 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 and I started getting a miracle and then, and then I began to doubt because symptoms came up or I got a bad MRI or I got a bad test and, and all of a sudden I, I begin to doubt and then fear comes in. Now I'm just gonna do everything in my power and I work with doctors. I have no problem with surgery and medicine. They all work together with faith unless you believe they're gonna stop you. And then I never got back to my eyes on Jesus. I never got back to my eyes in God's word. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And I want to challenge you today. If you stay out of God's word, bad English, good point, but you're screwed. Because you can't get faith any other way. I can encourage you with stories, but it's when I teach you the word that faith this faith comes from where? It's in your spirit, but it's now coming from within you as you renew your mind and make your body a living sacrifice. There's somebody here right now that thinks they have emotional problems. You don't have emotional problems. You've got thinking problems. Emotions always follow your thinking. So I'm a fearful person. No, you're a wrong thinking person. Leon, I'm a nervous person. No, you are a wrong thinking person. Leon, I have, I've got emotional disturbances. No, you've got thinking disturbances. Because wherever you can renew your mind with God's word, Romans chapter 12, it says that's when you prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And that word perfect means that mature. So you want, you want good and acceptable emotions and, and living? Then it's the word that must renew your mind. Emotions are not initiators, they are reactors. Emotions never initiate anything. Emotions always react to the thinking, either conscious or subconscious. Therefore, the word, the word, the word changes relationships, changes what we're doing in every area of our life. And my challenge to you today is stop blaming the devil, stop blaming God, and recognize there's one word that we find in the New Testament called doubt. And the only way to deal with it is just get more of Jesus. And it just begins to go out. Well, how do you know it's going? You know, add some fire to ice and do you really wonder if it goes? No, it's going to go. Stay in God's word. Watch what he'll do in your life. Now, there's something I say all the time, and that is I talk about people's beliefs. And I'll go as far as saying belief systems. In other words, you have habitual thinking. Now, this can really hurt you or can really help you. I know people who habitually think about how they don't fit in, how they're not good enough, how they'll never get what they really want, don't dream too big, don't think too high, that they habitually think that way. And their life just follows suit. I know others who have these belief systems. They habitually have trained their mind to believe the favor of God's on my life. Good things are coming my way. Tomorrow when I wake up, there's going to be a whole bunch of new stuff that's going to be better. I'm going to go further. God's got surprises for me. His blessing is upon me. You can habitually think 
faith thoughts, peaceful thoughts, joyful thoughts, kind thoughts, believing thoughts. You need to take control of your mind. Don't let any habitual thinking get into your life where your belief systems are hurting you. Let the systems that you believe, the belief systems of your mind and your heart be one that take you to wonderful places. Father, I pray in Jesus' name, make them aware of how they're thinking. Let the truth of your word challenge it and let them begin to change it over to believing in the grace and the power and the beauty of God. I pray this in your name. Amen. It's no accident that you watch today's show. You are special and you have a destiny to fulfill. Our media ministry reaches some of the darkest corners of the world and your support is what makes this possible week after week. You are vital. You can change a life. Act today.